I just want to welcome uh, all of you who have joined us. Uh, we have many of you who have joined us uh, from the uh, YouTube. Yeah, uh, we welcome you, uh, and also many of you who are in the Zoom room. Uh. Now today we are talking about the significant woman. So I'm I have actually also prepared two little question, like a polling question, which I will put it on. You can poll, okay? Now tell me how you what you feel, okay, about the two <laughs> questions. All right, and then we will see. Uh, the poll result at the end okay so i will post you two polling questions if you want you just you know take and then uh we will we'll be, able, we'll be able to catch yeah the, the the polling answer yeah from you okay so that's what we're going to do on the polling okay i want you to enjoy the seminar so i'm going to uh, pass the time now to pastor alex and uh, he's going to uh, open uh, uh, us with a word of prayer yeah all right okay okay come let's pray God, we just want to thank you for a wonderful session last Sunday with Pastor Jenny. I believe that God, every woman has something to catch on. And even as for us tonight, as we prepare our hearts tonight for this session, the significant woman, God, may you open all our ears to listen to you. May you open all our hearts so that we can feel you through Pastor Stephanie. God, even as we listen to her, we believe, oh God, after the whole session, our lives will never, never be the same again. Amen. So God, we invite your Holy Spirit right now Amen. and we pray in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Welcome back, ladies, to our webinar, Facets of Women. Before I let uh, tonight's speaker to take the floor, let me say a few words about her. Pastor Stephanie, that beautiful woman there, is my great friend. She is the co-senior pastor of World Harvest Church Malaysia in PJ. She is a very, very gifted teacher, a counsellor who has ministered to different groups of people internationally. So together with the husband, they have three amazing children. I know them. Pastor Daniel, Laura, Zoe, and two grandchildren, Heidi, adorable Heidi, and Elliot, the latest one. Woo, handsome guy. Pastor Stephanie is here with us tonight. Let's wave to her. Hi, everyone. So good for you to join us this uh Evening, I pray that you'll be so blessed as you listen to this message entitled The Significant Woman. God bless you. And yeah. let's get into to the message soon. So without further ado, let's welcome Pastor Stephanie, The Significant Woman. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be speaking in today's uh, webinar. So I want to welcome everyone to the Facets of a Woman webinar. And I thank Pastor Alex, Pastor Jenny Seat, and the leadership of Christ Lutheran Church for this opportunity to share today. The title of today's message is The Significant Woman. So before I begin, I want to share a little bit about myself with you. Now, while I was growing up, I was known to be an accident baby because I was born to very old parents. My mom, after giving birth to me, had gone immediately into menopause, and uh, my father had already retired. So being an accident baby is uh, something that one would not want to grow up with. Now, I was a baby girl that was uh, told to take care of my mom, my mother tried to have an abortion and um, my grandmother said to my mom, no, keep this one because if this is a baby girl, she will empty your pea pot one day. That was the reason why I wasn't aborted. Now, think about it. What, what a purpose that I would grow up doing my duties to empty my mom's pea pot. There were attempted abortions, but somehow God did not allow it. I personally believed that it was God who stopped the abortion. Now, I grew up with many questions, such as 
um, I don't want to be a burden in this family, so why did God place me here? My parents were super broke. They had their homes burned down twice during the Second World War when the Japanese had uh, attacked Malaya, Federation of Malaya at that time. And my parents were super old, super broke and super old, all retired <laughs> with, with no money. So I did not fit in amongst my siblings, though I grew up um, in a family of nine. My two older siblings, my brother and my sister, if you calculate their age, both their ages, you could say that my brother could have been my father and my sister could have been my mom. So I thought to myself, why was I born into this crazy world? Why must I be born into this family? The truth is that many of these questions were not answered because I was basically asking the wrong question. I was definitely not the candidate to be a significant woman because I was so broken and so broke. Significant means important or having influence. But you know, God has a purpose for all of us. He sees the end from the beginning. And a lot of times, things just don't happen to us. Things happen for us. Because it's true what has happened in our lives, whether we respond or we react, that will cause God to work opportunities for our lives or we would stay stuck in our brokenness. Now, how does God work? This is how He works. He does a work in us and then He does a work through us. So basically, when He sent Jesus Christ to die on that cross for you and I, He has done that work for us. So He does a work for us by sending Jesus Christ for us. And then He does a work in us by the power of the Holy Spirit, healing the brokenness in our lives. And finally, He does a work through us. Because once we are healed and we are restored in those certain areas of our lives, God is able to work through us to reach out to many more. That's why things just don't happen to us. They happen for us. God allows it. He's not, not present. He is present in all the things that has happened to us. In all of that, He guides us and leads us to work a healing process in our lives. So what is our purpose? What is our significance? I'd like to draw you to the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He planned for us a long time ago. So the main thing is that God establishes our identity. And what does He establish? He establishes that we are His masterpieces. Now everyone say, masterpieces. That means, no matter how broken we are, or how broken we were, He says, you and I, we are His masterpieces. Then if you continue to read, it says that He had created us anew in Christ Jesus. You see, the key thing is that we cannot be anew any other way. It has to be in Christ Jesus. For what purpose? It's for the purpose that we can do good things that He planned for us a long time ago. So the bottom line is this. Why did God create us? For good things. Say with me, for good things. We were meant to do good. But the thing is that we cannot do good in our carnal being, in our all carnal being. The good we do must come from the position of being anew in Christ Jesus. Why can't good come from a carnal being? Why can't good come from, a fl from the flesh? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And I'm going to read from the New King James Version. It says there, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? 
You know, divisions, envy, and strife, all these are found in the world. You don't have to look very far. Just look at the Malaysian politics. You can see it happening there. So the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, that whenever we have envy, strife, and divisions, that is exactly where the carnal being is at operation. You know, when God did a deep work in my heart, He healed my heart. After I received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, after getting saved, I realized that I was saved to do good works. You see, you and I, we can't be saved to do bad things. We can't be saved to continue to do bad things. We are saved to do God work, good work. But I couldn't do these good works out of a carnal heart. I needed to be cleansed. I needed to forgive others, even as I was forgiven. I needed to forgive my abusers and all those who took advantage of me. Even I needed to forgive Christians who actually hurt me. I realized that Christians who hurt me basically are just hurting people. Because hurting people hurt people. If you look at a banana tree, a banana tree can only give you banana fruit. You cannot find apples from a banana tree. So, people hurt people because they are hurting people. So, hurting people will always hurt people. I began to see that people are really hurt. Then, by God's grace, after God did that restoring work in my life, I in turn was able to reach out to minister to other lives. I realized that as long as I functioned in the position of being made anew in Christ Jesus, by God's grace, I was able to do that good work. Now let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 to 20 in the NIV Bible. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. So it's important that we who've become Christians should regard one another not from a worldly point of view. If you are the one who's grown up with a lot of suspicion in your life and you grew up having a lot of suspicious thoughts, you could be suspicious of this person or that person or every other person. But that's not how the way we should live our life. The Bible says from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. If you are in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. You and I, we have the ministry of reconciliation. It's not the ministry of divide. It's not the ministry of strife. It's not the ministry of envy. It's the ministry of reconciliation. What is the meaning of the word reconciliation? It means to restore. Verse 19 says that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So the first thing is we have this reconciliation to God. We reconcile with God. For every wrong that we've done, we reconcile to Him because He forgives us and He cleanses us and He makes us whole. So we become a new creation because, of course, He heals our broken heart. Then we reconcile with people. Then we share the ministry of reconciliation to other people who do not know God. And how is that so? We introduce Jesus Christ to them so that they themselves can reconcile to God as well. You see, a lot of times we understand good works as in doing good charitable works. In fact, I think good works go further than that. It's more than just doing good charitable works. You see, good works done through a person who's made new 
in Christ Jesus is basically one who becomes the hands and feet and mouthpiece of God. The influence of significance, the influence or the significance of Jesus' character is manifested through our thought life, through our speech and the choices we make and the involvement we have in the community. You see, God works through a renewed mind. Our mind becomes new when we are renewed in Christ. As long as we are thinking in the old, as long as we are thinking in this carnal mind and carnal thoughts, we cannot function out of a renewed person in Christ. Say with me, be renewed. Excellent, you're doing a good job. Say with me, renew my mind. Excellent, you're doing a good job. You know, I can liken our lives to something like having a bath to keep ourselves clean. You know, we are still living in the world, even though we are not of the world. So to continue to have the significance of Jesus Christ in our lives, we need to continue to be renewed in our minds, to be renewed in our hearts, to be renewed in our thought life, to be renewed in our speech. I don't know about you, but the day I became a Christian, it took me a while before I changed my speech. In the past, I had a different kind of speech. And it's a speech that's used by the world. You know how worldly speeches are. When they're angry, they cuss. When they're angry, they write blatantly on social media, I hate you or you are blah, 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 blah. They have a language. But when we are renewed in Christ, that should not be our language anymore. It has to be a language that's showing that we have reconciled ourselves to God and that God has done that work in our lives. So what must we do? Just as, you know, we take our bath every day. I hope all of us take our baths every day. <laughs> Living in this country, we take our baths every day because it's pretty hot, right? Even in winter, I bathe every day. What do I do? Whenever I bathe, I wash myself clean from all the perspiration or grime and dirt that I could have picked up if I was out in the playground with my children. So now I take a bath so that I become clean. And do you know that everything, every time you have a bath, you feel so fresh, you feel so new, you feel so relaxed. I love having baths. When I have a bath, I sit down and I relax. I feel fresh. I feel clean. In fact, a lot of times, I can think better after I have a bath. That's what cleaning does to us. We feel good. We take a bath daily. We take a wash to clean ourselves. So whenever we go into the Word of God or we come to a place we want to reset, I want to say to you, every time you have this wash in your mind, it is actually resetting your mind. What do you reset your mind with? What do I reset my mind with? I reset my mind by thinking the Word, by thinking the principles of the Word. You see, if I function just by my emotions, I'm going to say a lot of things that I will regret. I'm going to respond in a way that I would regret. Have I always responded in a way that's perfect all the time? No, no. Many times I fail. But the truth is I need to come back. The truth is I need to remember about that reset. I need to remember about the wash I need to take to make myself clean. Why? I'm living in the world, but I'm not of the world. You see, we practice this. It's not something that's naturally done, but we need to practice this new way of living, this new way of life, to reset, to have a good wash. So whenever you and I do a good wash, we have a bath, right? We go, shh, we wash, right? We are keeping ourselves clean. You know, in the world, sometimes we are so burdened by the things that happen around us. We are hard-pressed on all sides. And then what we do is we carry all of that pressure of life and we take it into the home. And the first person that's going to get that line of fire would be our spouse. 
The second would be our children. But what did they do wrong? They did nothing wrong. They happened to be there. Do we throw our anger? Do we, do we lash out just because we can? Or just because they are our family members and we know they won't pick up the bags and walk out and leave us? Our children will marry and they will leave one day, the home. But does it justify the fact that we can do it now because it's a safe place for us to lash out because they can't walk out? No, we have to think differently. We need to think in the place of love. Remember, there's always a domino effect. Whatever we have been facing out there in the world, when we bring it back home, the domino effect is that all that negativity could be released to everyone within the home unless we make a different decision, unless we reset, unless we come to a place and we stop, we breathe, we reset and we say, stop all this madness. Unless we come to a place and we reset and remember to be still and know that He is God. Now you and I may be hard pressed on every side, but to have that wash, to have that reset is to stop all that man madness and stay still and breathe and remember that He is God. Sometimes, we are hard pressed with all sorts of deadlines and demands that life make on us. Oh yes, life makes a lot of demands on us. And then if we do not stop, breathe and reset and take that wash and cleanse our mind, we will end up being hard pressed. We will end up being fearful. We will end up acting in anxiety. So in the midst of all that chaos, Remember, stop, breathe, reset. Can we say that? Stop. Can you say the next one? Breathe. Very good. Can you say the last one? Reset. That's excellent. What am I doing? I'm explaining to you something that's very important, something practical that you and I can do every day. Sometimes when we are angry, we end up being very cutting in our words. We end up being sarcastic. And we should watch how we are when we speak because we can hurt other people that way. So whenever we are hard-pressed, we are filled with anxiety, we need to stop, breathe, and reset. Sometimes we end up having the the weight of the injustices that's happening around us. We carry hatred and bitterness, perhaps towards God and towards those around us. What happens is that we end up having mindsets and perspectives that are negative or even built on ignorance. Even conclusions that have been drawn from bad experiences in life or what we were told by others that's been very negative. We forget that the Word is the anchor in our lives that will help us to stop, breathe and reset. You know what? It's important to do that because we need to keep our sanity we need to keep the peace within our souls. It's no good if we end up being critical, angry, and we strive. As in the words of my daughter, she says, that's having bad vibes, mom. That's having bad vibes. So what do we do? When we stop, we breathe, we reset. It's like having a wash that the Word of God becomes an anchor to us, keeping us sane and keeping us peaceful within our souls. What happened? What happens to a sisterhood of believers? Think about it. If every sister that comes to church after becoming a believer of Jesus Christ remembers to stop, breathe, and reset and practice the word in their lives every day, every day, and ends up having one another's back, carrying the burdens of our sisters when they are down, praying for them, not beating them more. It's very sad to see if a sister beats another sister down to a pulp if she's going through a hard time. But we are there to offer support and to pray for them. We 
encourage them. We think well of one another and we speak the truth in love. Can you imagine what happens? God is love and love never fails. God is love and love never fails. Can you imagine if all the sisters would come together in unity and function out of that one new creation in Christ? What a force the sisterhood would be. What a force she would be. What a force to reckon with for the world out there that the sisterhood of believers are a mighty force able to create new things, able to create history with a new mindset because women are significant. So I want to share with this in conclusion with you. The significance that we have, the importance that we have, it begins with our mind. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, God's will is always good for us. It's always good. God's discipline is always good for us. It may not be nice for the moment, but at the end, it will always bear the peaceable fruit of righteousness. So God is good, and He desires to heal you of your brokenness because there is significance within you that He wants to draw out. Will you allow him to? Will you allow him to make you the new creation in Christ Jesus? Because if you allow that, if you allow that, what happens is you begin to influence those around you. And the truth is, you are God's masterpiece. And the truth is, you were destined to be a new in Christ a long time ago. It wasn't just a brand new idea by God. It was destined a long time ago. And finally, you were planned by God to do good works a long, long time ago. So you were created for good. Would you say with me, I was created for good. Excellent. You're doing a good job. So remember that you're created for good. You're created to be a new in Christ Jesus. You are created for the plans of God. You are His masterpiece. Nothing can change that. And this is my joy to share this with you this very day. That no matter how broken you are or you've been, there is nothing that God cannot heal. There is no mess God cannot clean up to bring about a message. God bless you and be with you. Let us pray. Perhaps this day you've heard this message and you say, Pastor Stephanie, I've been very broken in my life and I need Jesus to come into my life to heal me of my brokenness. You know what? God can do that for you. And all it takes is for you to believe and to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So if you're watching this message from me this very day and you say, I want Jesus as my Lord and Savior, please repeat with me in this prayer. Say, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I bring you my broken heart. And I confess that I need you to come into my life, to cleanse me, to forgive me for all my wrong, to heal me of my brokenness. Come, Lord Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you said that prayer, congratulations. You have just made a transition 
from being a non-child of God to a child of the living God. How awesome is that? And now, I want to encourage you to be planted in a church where you can grow, where there'll be uh, brothers and sisters in the community that will lead you in your new journey, in this new life that God has for you. And for all of us, remember, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. And whenever we are hard-pressed on every side, let's continue to practice. Stop, breathe, and reset. Say with me again. Stop, breathe, and reset. When you do that, you're taking a wash. There's a wash that comes right through with the cleansing, not only by Jesus Christ, but with the cleansing of the Word of God. Let's live by the Word's principles. Let's not live by our emotions. Emotions have not gotten us very far anyway. So live, let's live by principle and let's be a mighty force of God for the world out there and spread our significance everywhere. God bless you and talk to you soon. So um, I'm so glad to be able to be sharing this message with you. Uh, I hope you've been blessed this evening. I'm prepared right now to take any of your questions that you may have, and I'll do my very best as I discussed with Pastor Jenny earlier to um, answer those questions. If I'm able to, I will answer the questions. If I'm not, we'll just, you know, go to God and ask him together for the answer. Okay, um, anybody has any question at all? Pastor Stephanie, I mean, yes. I have a question for you. How do I live a life of significance? When I'm overwhelmed daily with what I'm going through, <laughs> you know, a lot of women yeah. are going through a lot, a lot in their life. How do we live a life of significance? Well, I think the first thing is that um, women, women tend, I mean, women like to multitask. You know, I remember one time um, I was on the phone cooking and counseling at the same time. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh. I don't know how that is possible, but wow. you know, I can think and counsel at the same time, you know. Um, I don't know, but but if you notice that uh, men are different, they are very linear and they can only do one thing at one time. Um, you, you cannot put too many things on them. That's just how they are wired. Uh, they are wired differently from women. So, Women tend to be overwhelmed a lot of times because they just take too much on their plate. Uh, so firstly, we have to, um, we have to, like for me, I had to learn to say no. I had to know my limitations of what I can and cannot do. Uh, I, I have learned more and more not to overpromise. Um, and uh, as I do that, as I begin to concentrate, as I take a step back, as I live within the means that I'm able to function out of that life, I'm able to, uh, I'm able to be that, to be that significant woman. Because I believe if I want to spread my significance, uh, the best place to try is really your family. That would be your first <laughs> mission field. Uh, I was challenged a very long time ago that um, if if I did not, if I did not see my family whole, I had I did not earn any respect to be able to talk about God to anybody else. So I I spent I spent a lot of time in my early days trying to set my priorities right. So I prioritize my life. Firstly, it's God. Next would be my husband, then my children, then the ministry and the work. So if I went according to that priority as in the order that God had set it, I realized that I was able to function and uh, able to spread my significance a little better. So um, that was how I did it. I, I also realized that um, I don't do anything out of my own strength for without God, Everything is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So the grace of God is that supernatural ability that God gives me 
that allows me to live according to his standard and his ways. So that helps me. So if you ask me, uh, what is the first thing in line of priority in bringing out my significance would be my relationship with God. That's why I say to function anew and to do that good work, I had to firstly be rooted and planted in Jesus. Otherwise, it's just got to be me and my own effort. And in life, I learned one thing. If, if I did things with my own effort, I'm going to run out of steam very quickly. I'm going to be very tired very quickly. But to, but to do it with the grace and the strength of God, uh, then he sustains me all the way. Well, I hope that helps. Amen. Great answer. Great answer. Hey, Pastor right. Stephanie, <laughs> yes. Pastor yes. Stephanie, there's a question actually. They asked, but you already answered in the webinar just now. One of the <laughs> questions was, I would like to ask you, being a pastor, working and being a mother, how are you how are you putting your priorities? She came in the question and you already answered the whole thing. <laughs> oh, you must have a word of knowledge, you know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't plan for awesome. that. Awesome. Yeah. That, that's yeah, another yes. question. That's another yeah. question from Philippines, huh? By right. Ali, who says, yes. how do you help a Christian woman who is suffering from depression? I was informed the word of God does not help. Okay, people who suffer from depression basically has a lot of anger, but it's just anger that's turned inward. And depression is a place where they find that they have no way out. So the first thing you need to, to know that for a person who suffers from depression, you, you got to see at what level of depression are they at. Because there are some people who just need a little bit of encouragement and they're off, you know, they can go on in life. But there are some people who live in a cycle of depression. They, they, they're, so, they're so disappointed with the world and they're disappointed with life and they're even disappointed with God. So if you come in hard with Bible knowledge, and it's not going to reach out to them. You need, you, 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 I always say sometimes even for someone who's going through so much of pain, it's good that we don't try to be too quick to offer a solution because these people need an outlet more than anything else. So if this is a friend and you find that um, the person who's suffering from depression, you, you got to see at what level are they at? Because some people who suffer from depression become suicidal as well. Uh, some people think about, oh, I guess it's good for me to just end my life. My whole trouble or my worries will end if I just end my life. Uh, that's someone that's speaking out of a heart that's filled with despair. But you, you want to ask the question, has this person begun to make plans? Uh, have they planned how to end their lives? If you have somebody who's going through such a situation, I suggest that you do not take things into your own hands. but uh, be a friend. You could suggest to this person, let's go see a therapist together. You and I, why don't we just make an appointment, go see a therapist. Let's go see a psych psychologist. Let's go and talk things out. Let's see if there's anything that needs to be done. Um, we have to act quickly. We have to act quickly, especially for people who are suffering from depression and they have actually started planning. Uh, otherwise, you know, I think being a friend, being a listener, um, I want to say that in my counseling, the biggest help that I've ever had was with the Holy Spirit who's been living in me and guiding me every step of the way. The Holy Spirit guides me every step of the way and teaches me how to counsel so that I'm able to see right through the person's soul uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, God in his grace, has allowed me to see a lot of um, restoration in, in that part. So really, I, I just work hand in hand with the Holy Spirit. So then again, I, I want to say, what level of depression is this person in? I have had cases whereby I would refer them to see a, a psychologist for therapy. But if I find that person needs a little bit more than that, I would refer the person to a psychiatrist because some people need um, medication to stabilize them uh, while waiting for them to build their faith, while waiting 
um, to be in that place to to come on to a you know when a person is very depressed they cannot see any way out so sometimes they need a little help so medication helps for certain people so it all depends what kind of case you have in your hands but it's always good to be a listener and to be a friend some of us are very quick to t- try to teach the other person or 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 be hard with the other person uh i think to to hear the heart of that person and to feel the pain, pain with that person is very important but at the same time to not become codependent so that's uh Liz, <laughs> I've given you so much in a nutshell. <laughs> I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, it really helps. Yeah. What a good wash today, Pastor yeah. like Stephanie. Uh, yeah, it's yes. a good wash. Uh, we are masterpiece. Okay. Yes, uh, sisterhood. Yes. We are we are made for significance when we come together. We are great mighty force to make significance. Yes. Not just our family, but also our loved ones and also our community in our church too. You know, uh, we are truly made. Um, we are truly the the peace of God. Yeah. Um, Pastor Stephanie, I love your sharing where you say the word bring anchor in our life. Truly. Yes. Uh, for me too, you know, without the Holy Spirit and without the word of God, it's truly, I cannot, I will be breaking down, you know. Actually, it keeps me sane and peaceful because of the Holy Spirit, the prayer and the word of God. Without the word of God, truly we can, really cannot reset. <laughs> Pastor Stephanie, I really yes. love your sharing when you say, stop, breathe, and reset. I really love that. And you know, reset. It really helps yes. me. Yes, yes, reset. It was Many real. times I, I stop, breathe, and reset in the restroom <laughs> because <laughs> nobody knocks at the door and disturbs me there. But I run in there and stop, breathe, and reset right in the restroom. Uh, that's the place where I am secure and I can be alone with my God, mm. you know, and nobody will disturb me there. And a lot of times, I think uh, ever since I started doing this, everything that I recommend, I've already done it and I'm still doing it. Uh, mm. It helps me with my daily living. I find that um, I'm a better witness and at the same time, um, the best person to ask if you have changed in any ways to ask your spouse <laughs> the one who lives with you. Oh, I must ask my husband, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 do, I, do, I do ask my husband from time to time and I ask him, tell me, am I better than, than uh, yesterday? where I was? <laughs> how am I much better than before? You, so, you see, I realize I may not be where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Praise so that encourages me. Yeah, yeah, because God is into progress, right? He's not into perfection. I mean, if we are totally perfect, then I think we'll become God. And I used <laughs> to tell people, you don't want me as God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'll regret it if I'm God. So um, he, he tells me, my husband tells me, okay, you were like that before. You're better now. You can improve here. And, and I like it because I know he loves me. He's going to speak the truth to me. And it helps me with my life. You know, if I could relive my life all over again, I would live it with more trust in God. I would live my life with more more trust in the word, more trust in God, more relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I would have lived life with lesser tears being shed. I would live my life with having different perspectives. I I would cry less and I would I would worry less, <laughs> really, you know. Uh, I would Amen. cry less because I think there are reasons to cry. Like if someone shares with me their pain of uh, uh, suffering cancer or, or death or, or losing a child, I mean, I would cry for those kind of things. But to cry that, you know, I didn't get what I want. <laughs> I think, you know, that, that's useless tears <laughs> that's shed in the wrong places, you know. Yeah. Wow. Pastor so, Stephanie, 
What a fantastic sharing you have. We have tonight, Pastor Stephanie. You're always oh, the I'm tops. just glad. You're always the tops in your sharing and your counseling uh, skill is so good. Uh, there's a oh, question. In, person, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, in the in the chat room. Uh, this is by Sister Linda Wong. Uh. Oh, uh, yes. is it to, to be to be a significant woman? We may uh may be a long way for some to achieve. Uh. how can we encourage them to take the f f first step? Yeah, how how do you do the first step? Okay. Uh, the first step to be a significant woman is, I shared in, in the message today, we cannot do it outside Christ. Because we need, you see, the thing is that when we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then what happens is that Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit that enables us to be significant. If you become significant apart from Christ, then it's you maintaining that significance. And if you try to maintain that significance, you get very tired. Just like I tell people that if we seek our own promotion, then we will always have to maintain our promotion. And to maintain our promotion is very tiring. But if we seek God and we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then He promotes us. When He promotes us, He will maintain the promotion. And if you ask me between the two, one is all self-effort and the other one is just relying on God. And he, he who lives in me breathes through me and helps me in life. And therefore, he draws out the significance as I allow him to. So one is done with my own self-effort. The other one is done with the Lord guiding me every step of the way. So that's the first step, Pastor Eric. Uh, if you ask me what's the first step to live a life of significance, one the first step is to come to Jesus. That's the first step. And, you know, we live in a very uh, instant world. For example, we get irritated if the Zoom is a little slow. <laughs> we get upset if the uh, Wi-Fi connection is slow. We want everything fast. We want it instant. But the Christian or the fruitful life isn't an instantaneous life. It is a life that we walk day by day with God guiding our hands, God leading us, and God uh, holding on to us. And a lot of things that God allows in our lives, if we take it in a negative way, then we would never see the good come out of it. The mess that we are in cannot become a message, or the trial or the test we are in cannot become a testimony. But if we allow God to work in our lives, then we will see that the things that he allowed to happen to us is just not happening to us, but it's happening for us because it's out of that. If we lean in and we allow God to turn it around, then it's happened for us because then we can reach out to someone else. Like, for example, I was, a, 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 um, I was an aborted child, okay, but that abortion didn't take place. So I understand the meaning of rejection. So anyone who goes through rejection, I can sympathize with them. I can feel compassion for them. I know what they're going through. I know the pain that they go through because I've been through it. But I also know the path to receiving my healing because I've received it. And because I've received it, I'm able to help others. So for example, Pastor Jenny, if I tell you to give Pastor Alex 10 ringgit and you have zero ringgit, are you able to give it to him? Answer is no. But if I gave you a hundred ringgit, Pastor Jenny, and yes. then I say to you, give Pastor Alex 10 ringgit now, will you be able to give it to him? Sure. Yes, <laughs> sure. because you yes. have a hundred ringgit. Yes. So if I have received love from God, I'm able to give love. If I'm received, if I've received restoration from God, I'm able to give restoration. I can give what I have received. Yes. I hope that answers the question, Pastor Eric. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, there's one more question. Can I just read it to you? Okay. Uh, all sure. right. It says, I, I'm born in a Christian family and was not given the choice to choose. Okay. Uh, sometimes I reach to a point of being so tired of church. All right. A church scene. And I understand. Tired of church scene. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I understand doing good doesn't get us to heaven. How else can we get to find our significance? Is it only in church? That's the question mark. Okay. So to be born in a Christian family and was not given a choice. I'm so sorry, firstly, to this person who's written this. I'm so sorry that you went through such a religious um, 
um, upbringing because being born to a Christian family is being born into the light. But what happens is that um, I can only bring this up in the, the example of my family. I was born in a non-Christian family. So when I became a Christian, I didn't, I didn't do good works because of the church. I did good works because of my purpose. Hmm. Okay. And my children are being born into a Christian family because I'm Christian now. So they do not know what darkness is. So a long time ago, God already guided my husband and I that in living our Christian life, we are supposed to live it in, in, in a relational way, not in a dogmatic religious way. You know, sometimes uh, my children, they, oh, sometimes uh, my children they, they go through a, a situation um, and I will not just bring out the Bible and, and smack them down with it. I, I give them the choice and I try to live in the light as much as possible so that they can see the testimony of living in the light. So I'm really very sorry that you didn't have uh, that much of an example in your life, but I choose to do good, not to go to heaven. I choose to do good because that's my purpose. You don't only find your significance in the church. You find your significance in the purpose that God has placed in your life because you are an individual that God has created. You are his masterpiece and he loves you so much. That's that's what I like to share with you. Thank you, uh, Pastor Stephanie. Uh, one more question uh, from, this is from Philippines. Uh, Right. More women, more women, more women come attend Bible study at our mission station. The men, they do not come. All right, okay. I am okay. inclined to believe that our women feel more significant than the men. Am I right? Okay, like I say, men are wired differently. Women are wired differently. We cannot expect a man to think like a woman or a woman to think like a man. I just want to share a little funny story with you. There was one time in my life, I told my husband, um, you know, basically I didn't, I didn't tell him exactly what I wanted, but I kind of like expected him to know what I felt because I was expecting him to think like a woman, but a man doesn't think like a woman. So he said to me, how would I know what you're thinking or what you're feeling unless you tell me? So I realized, oh, He's not wired like a woman. How would he know? So he would only know if I would talk to him. But I think men, the thing about men, when they get, when they get the word, when they get the principle, they get it. They don't waver. A man, if he gets it, he gets it. My husband, if he gets it, he gets it. He, he doesn't need any reminder. He doesn't need any push. He doesn't need any, any of that sort because men are linear. So if a man doesn't attend uh, uh, the Bible study, um, I don't know. Uh, maybe because the topics are not of interest to them. Uh, but I would like to say, don't worry so much about the man who is not attending. You just keep growing and keep growing. The thing about uh, ship in marriage between husband and wife this is the only relationship where two become one. Find them in relationship. You only find it in marriage where the two become one. So if you are excelling and you are moving forward in your relationship with God, guess what? Your husband has to move forward as well because the two are one. And uh, maybe it's good to sit down and have um, a, a talk with the men. A woman don't do that. Um, Asian men like listening to Asian, like listening to men. I, I'm married to an Indian, okay? So in the Indian community, a woman doesn't talk very much. Uh, but my husband is very good to me because he believes 
in my purpose. He believes the call of God in my life. I received the call of God before I got married. So I was going to serve God anyway, with or without my husband. <laughs> the attachment of a man <laughs> wasn't, wasn't going to stop me or help me move forward. I was going to move forward in Jesus with or without a man in my life. Uh, so heaven, God gave me this wonderful man that uh, we ended up getting married. Uh, but he supports me to, to do the work of the ministry because um, he's secure and I'm secure. And we both are wanting to reach as many people as possible, you know, to, to fulfill our purpose. So maybe it's good uh, if some leadership in the church could talk to the men and ask them, what do they like? If my husband runs a, a men's ministry, he would take them out for a game. They would go for a game and they would sit down over um, tea or coffee and they'll sit down and talk about life. They are not like women that will take a <laughs> Bible and notebook and journal. They are not that kind, you know. And if we want to expect them to behave like women, we're going to be very frustrated. I think we need to understand the men, how they are created and what works for them and let them function the way they are wired, in the way they, they are, they're going to grow and thrive and move. And the last thing is for we should do is, as women, we are, we are going to try to lead men. That's against the, the order that God has given. Men is supposed to be the leader. So we just encourage them to lead. I hope that answers the question. Get a poll, you know. Find okay. out. <laughs> men play games. Men <laughs> play games. <laughs> yes, men love to yeah, play, play games. games. <laughs> and they love to study. play games. Yeah. Yes, do you yes. know when my husband gets together with some of his friends? You know how women, we, we get together, we hug. How are you? It's so good to see you. Not seen you for a long time. But my husband, when he gets together with some of his friends, they hit one another and say, hey, man, nice to see you. And they start, I was like, why are you abusing each other? <laughs> I mean, that's their way of relating. It's really weird. But they are men. <laughs> Let's bring the Bible study yeah. to the games. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. I think that's a that's okay. a good good answer. Yeah, praise the Lord. Uh, this question is from myself. Okay, uh, I, I I like the way you uh, put uh, stop, brief, and reset. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think we all need to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a it's a it's a like a discipline that um, may be uh, difficult for us to do at times. Uh, I I don't know. Maybe you can share with us your experience of stop brief and reset yeah to just encourage yeah. us yeah yeah okay it takes a lot of practice and it's practiced by choice so uh, in the past i had i was such a ball of emotions because i went through so much rejection by abortion was not the only issues that i faced in my life uh, i faced a lot of different kinds of issues and uh, having a lot of emotions, growing up with a lot of emotions, uh, a lot of times uh, women who go through a lot of emotional pain while they were growing up can take, two, can take two, two directions. One is they clam up, they don't speak. Or the other one is they speak and they have verbal diarrhea. Like <laughs> there's no end to the speaking, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I could do either or, but both did not give me good fruit. So either way, I needed to make a choice because to have something I've never had, I must do something I've never done. If I want peace and if I want to find that uh, I'm living in a place of peace, I'm living in a place of stability, then I cannot function with the same mode of response as in the past. Because if I did, then I would be very peaceful by now. But because I wasn't in a place of peace, that means the way I responded in the past wasn't working. So as a result, I needed to, there were times that I even had to bite my tongue because I didn't want to say the wrong thing. And I realized that uh, words are very powerful. They can either build or they can tear down. 
And we make no mistake, whatever we sow, we will reap. So if we are tearing, one day someone will tear us also. If we hurt others, someone will hurt us back in return. So I, I realized that. And because of that, I began to become more conscious. So with every fiber of my being, I will become more conscious to just stop. The Bible says in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 19 to 20, it says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to be angry. So I did that as a matter of practice to listen and be slow to speak and to be slow to be angry. And I don't have to give an answer if I don't have an answer. I can just say, okay, give me some time to think about what you said. Sometimes I do this with our children and I do this with my husband because I don't know what to say, right? I, I don't have it all together. So I would say I, I, I don't have the answer, but let me think and let me come back to you. So instead of just picking out my emotions and we will have an argument after that, um, well, we are married, we are in God, we love Jesus, but we still have to live on earth together. So, <laughs> so um, I take that by practice. Pastor Eric, if you ask me how, with every fiber of my being, I, I, I practice this, I stop, I breathe, and I reset. Good, thank that you. That helps. Yeah. That's, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I just want to bring out the uh, poll that uh, we polled just now. Uh, the question number yes. one, uh, do you think you are a woman of significance? I, I think 69% uh, responded say yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, one three percent say no, uh, which is one person. And 28% and, uh, which is eight person that says I'm not sure. Now, what is your thought about if I'm not sure, if I'm in that category? Do you think do you think you are a woman of significance? And the answer is I'm not sure. You know. Uh, do you have any okay. word for women uh, who poll this? Uh okay. So I would like to say that we only know uh, we only know about our significance if we know our, about our identity. So I want to encourage you if you want to see yourself live. A life of significance if you want to be sure about your significance go to the one who created you which is god almighty if you understand the identity that he's called you to you will begin to know your significance thank you thank you yeah i i think uh, that uh tells the story of the second question do you think that god can make you to be a woman of significance i think 97 percent 29 out of 35 answered yes. So I think, uh, well, we, we got the message yeah, that uh, yeah, the significance of us uh, can only be found in the maker, yeah, which is God. Yeah? Yeah, so I think that's very clear yeah, in the polls. Right. <laughs> that's there's wonderful. Another, there's another question in the, uh, the uh, Q&A. Right. Say that to my simple mind, isn't that our lives that will become significant in following Jesus in honoring God with our lives? What is it then do you define a true significant woman? Take the example of uh, Mary. She's simple, but she is significant. So what are the values that you've defined as significant woman? This is from an anonymous attendee. Okay, so uh, to define the life of a significance, a significant woman would be one who would fulfill the purpose and call of God in her life. So everybody has a different purpose and different call. For example, you see Mother Teresa. Man, this woman was a real significant woman. Nobody can do what she can do. Not everyone is called to that. And she worked amongst the poor in India, and she gave a life for that work. Right. I, I, I really take my hats off to, to Mother Teresa. What a life of significance. Uh, yet there are people who quietly, you know, work in an orphanage. I know there are people working in an orphanage up in northern Thailand, and they've given their life to that. You don't read about them in books. You don't hear about their names, but they are living their call and their purpose. So what is happening? They are living their life of significance because they are doing the very call that God has asked them to do. So living a life of significance doesn't mean you have to be big in your name out there. No, not that at all. You can live 
the life that God has called you to live, whatever the purpose is that is for you. And we all have different purposes. All of us have different purposes. Can you imagine if everyone is a doctor? There'll be nobody to throw out garbage. <laughs> you know, everybody has got a purpose in life. And if we do well in that purpose and that call, I believe we are living our significance. I hope that answers the question. Okay. There's Pastor another Eric. Question. Oh. There's another question. Why only men must be the lead? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought I answered the question already. Uh, yeah. Last week. This is not, this is not both, a, a, both, a men, thing, yeah? <laughs> both men and women can be leaders. But in God's uh economy or in his provision, he called men to lead because the only reason why a woman is called to lead is when the man fails. For example, Deborah was a judge in the book of Judges. She was called to lead because her father failed, uh, her, her husband failed to lead. Because her husband failed to lead, she comes up to lead. So if you ask me, I, I don't want to lead. I prefer my husband to lead. You know, I can be, I can, I can, I can be very, very comfortable in his leadership. But if a man fails to lead, then God calls the woman. So no, it's just not one particular gender. God calls both genders, but generally he calls the man to lead. And it's good. Let him, Amen. let him lead and let him carry out the work. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Those who lead, those who lead will have to account for more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I prefer my husband to lead. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let him oh. let him handle all the problems. <laughs> okay, Pastor Eric, uh, yeah. are we done with the questions? Yeah, we are done with the question. Uh, I mean, no more question from the YouTube. I, do, I don't think there's any more question. Yeah, Pastor Alex from the yeah. uh, chat or the Q&A. Yeah, we have covered yeah most of it but I, I, but I believe if you have any more question yeah you can always yeah stay yeah. on come on chat with us if you want to just for 15 20 minutes okay uh, or as usual uh you know we, you can contact us uh, if you uh, got uh, clc's number or even uh, your host pastor jenny yeah so i think yeah. most of you in the zoom room know pastor jenny yeah so you can keep that question going yeah pastor jenny yeah go ahead yes um pastor stephanie your sharing was fantastic tonight you're raised, oh, always always about yeah, um, I always re I like stop breathe. Set. Eunice is always teaching me breathe in, mom. Breathe long breath. <laughs> I love that. He always it Eunice helps. is always teaching me to breathe in whenever I panic or whenever I'm stressful. Okay, so I need to take a deep breath, deep breathe, count, and then reset. Okay, <laughs> refocus, refocus. <laughs> okay. So before we uh, say goodnight, coming up next Sunday, everyone, I'm so excited. My daughter, eldest daughter, Pastor Ooh. Julian. Ooh. Ooh. Don't daughter, miss this. Yes, my Don't eldest miss. daughter, Pastor Julian, all the way from Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, she told me, she, or she, uh, Pastor Jenny told me that she's getting up at like four in the morning. Yeah, she just to speak to us. Just to speak to us. So I think, please don't miss it. If a person gets up at four in the uh -huh. morning to speak to us, I think uh -huh. she has a message from God. Yeah? Yes. Amen? Yes. Yeah. Uh, she will speak to us live at 4 a.m. Vancouver time with us. All right. So uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Julian wrote, Did you know in the Bible, women were the first at the cradle and the last at the cross? She wrote to me, Mom, did you know in the Bible, women were first at the cradle and last at the cross? And throughout the history of mankind, God invites us women. Wow, I love that. Women, men and women are women to participate in his God-sized plan. All right? God invites us. I really love what she wrote. God invites us to participate in his God-sized plan. And every season of our life, Pastor Stephanie, right? We go through feeling unwanted, feeling unappreciated, you know. These are women's emotions. Uh -huh. Sometimes we don't trust our emotions, okay? <laughs> emotions come, but we, we cannot trust our emotions. Sometimes we, 
like Julian always tell me, mistrust your emotions. I, I love that. I, it sticks to me for life, okay? So feeling unwanted, feeling unappreciated, disappointed, or you're feeling young, I'm feeling too young or too old, but God still wants you, okay? Chloe, you're young, but God still wants you, okay? Amen. Um, so uh, those who are young are listening to this. God wants you. And let's come back next Sunday, same time, 8.30 p.m., same place, same platform. And let's listen to my incredible daughter, Pastor Julian Sitzinston. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Her title is Woman Wanted in Every Season. Wow. I thought I shared with that, Pastor, uh, Pastor Eric, right? Yep. Winter, summer, spring. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's every right, that's season, right. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're God looking wanted, forward. Yeah. yeah. God, woman wanted in every season. I'm sure yeah. all of you have benefited tonight. And I hope that you could share uh, our YouTube link and uh, to all your friends and ladies, friends, and to come on next Sunday, all right? Um, I need your help. Keep promoting. I can't wait to hear my daughter speak and uh, hope that all of you come on again. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Pastor Stephanie. I thank love you. you. You're such a great I love pastor. you too. Yes. Thank, I want to thank all who stayed till the very end in this session. I pray the blessing of God upon each and every Amen. one of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, well, Pastor uh, those, Eric. Those who love to stay on again, you could stay on. Yeah. Uh, but for those who need to leave, See you next Sunday. Bye. 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 Thank we just say you. a closing Bye -bye. prayer. God yeah. bless you. Yes. Yeah, we say a closing yeah. prayer uh, and we pray yeah. for Pastor Stephanie as well, right? Come, let's just okay. uh, end this thank session. You. Thank Father, you, Pastor Eric. Yeah, Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful evening. Lord, we are so grateful to you for your word. Uh, Father, we praise and give you thanks for your servant, Pastor Stephanie, who is Amen. with us and have spoken to us. Uh, and, and through her, Father Lord, uh, Lord, she has really encouraged Lord, the body of Christ uh, this Thank evening. You, so, Father, may you continue to bless her ministry, the Lord, that you continue to increase in her. Father, we thank you, Lord, that there are times in our life that we need to stop, breathe, and reset. And Father, that rings loud in, our, loud in us this evening. And Father, uh, may we find... Uh, uh, Comfort, may we find peace in you, Father Lord, as we um, uh, go to you. And Father, we want to thank you and praise you that this evening, O oh God, we just want to give you all the glory. And Father, we, we give you praise, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good night.